Hi everyone. In this tutorial, we're going to explore some techniques to modeling this Sphericon object for 3D printing. Okay, the Sphericon uh, has been used as a subject to many sculptures, puzzles, and even children's toys over the years now. Uh, but we're going to put our own little spin on it for this demonstration using the uh, native modeling tools inside of 3ds Max. Um, no plugins or add-ons will be necessary to follow along. Um, the tutorial is compatible with uh, 3ds Max 2010 and higher. Any, pretty much any version of Max with the graphite modeling ribbon um, should work here. Um, this image you see here, it was actually a render I did of the finished model uh, using the Corona render engine for 3ds Max. Um, so with all that said, uh, we can get started. Um, we'll be modeling this object to scale for 3D printing as I've said. So, uh, you know, in order to do that, the first thing we'll need to uh, do here is set up our scene. Uh, for modeling in real-world units, okay? I'm going to use uh, millimeters in this case. So we're going to go up here to customize and unit setup. Now you can see mine is already on metric as the display unit scale and millimeters is chosen. All right, and that's fine for your display units, but if you want to uh, ensure that you're actually modeling to real-world scale, you'll also need to tick on this uh, system unit setup and ensure that the uh, system unit scale is also uh, selected on, on millimeters. Okay, so one unit equals one millimeter, and that's okay. And then I'm hitting okay here. So now the system is set up for modeling to real-world scale uh, in millimeters. And um, I'm going to right-click on the snaps toggle, and that'll bring up the grid and st snap settings along with some other uh, panels here. And I'm going to go to home grid. Now the grid spacing currently is set up to 10 millimeters, so that will mean every unit space here, every little square on the grid, will indicate 10 millimeters uh, in you know uh, in square millimeters. So it'll be 10. All right, so that's fine for this, um, and we'll just uh, we'll use that in all viewports, and um, that's it. So we're set up. All right, so I'm going to uh, expand my view here. I'm currently in quad view, and to do that, I'm just going to hold down Alt and tap the W key, and that'll ex uh, expand the uh, viewport here, okay? All right, so let's get started. Um, the first thing I want to do is go to my extended primitives, and um, I'm going to bring up a spindle, all right? And we'll just arbitrarily, for now, draw the spindle right in the viewport here, okay? And then we'll go over here onto the right-hand side and we'll uh, adjust some settings. So I'm going to uh, change the radius to 40 millimeters, all right? And then uh, I'm going to change the height to double that, so 80 millimeters. And then the cap height will be the same as the uh, radius, so 40 millimeters. And that gives us basically uh, the 3D equivalent to a, what looks like a top, you know, okay, so something like that. All right, so now the next thing we'll do here is go to our uh, vertex weld modifier. And the threshold is 0 0.1 millimeters by default on my uh, settings. And so that should be good enough to weld all of the stray points. All right, so what we're going to do to ensure that we're uh, properly welding everything is we're going to right click on the realistic, uh, uh, right up here on the left hand upper corner of our viewport, you'll see where it says realistic or shaded view. Right click on that to bring up this box. Go to configure. Now we'll want to go to statistics tab. All right, now we're not doing an animation, so frames per second won't mean anything here. We'll deselect that. Um, vertex count and polygon count, we want selected. And then we'll click on the total and selection. All right, 
and then we'll show it in the uh, active view and click apply okay so now over here in the left hand side we have our uh, total number of polygons total number of verts and then the selected object all right and since there's only one object in the scene it should be equal all right so that's uh, going to help us keep track of our uh, polygon count and to make sure that we're welding our uh, vertices properly i tapped on f4 to show my uh, edged faces and i tapped on j to get rid of the uh, bounding box uh, outline there okay all right so here's the object um, i'm going to add an edit poly on top of that all right and I'm just going to be sure that uh, we welded everything up by box selecting this top vertice and of course it's just one selected there on the right hand you see it right here under spindle alright and uh, down here it should just be one as well so that means we're all welded up and uh, we can proceed okay uh, one thing I will do so that you can see things better is I'm going to drag and drop a default uh, material and I'm going to change the object color to black all right, I just do that typically during my modeling sessions to see the object a little bit better. Um, and I'm going to change it to hard uh, shading. Okay, so here's the object. All right, and uh, at this point, you can go ahead and collapse it down. All right, collapse all, and you have an editable poly object now. All right, so I'm tapping F to view it from the front or the graphic. Okay, and... Um, what we're going to do next is uh, go to face uh, level and just drag here and select half of the model. All right, just like that. All right, so now I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard over here on the left hand side under the edit geometry rollout. I'm going to click the detach uh, button, which will bring up this panel if you're holding down shift. All right, and it will ask you to uh, detach as a completely new object, or you can select one of these little boxes to detach it as an element or as a clone. We don't want it as a clone, but we do want it as an element of the current object. So say OK. Now this half of the model has been detached from the other half, and at this point we can tap on E to switch to our rotate gizmo. And we're just going to rotate this. Actually, before I do that, um, you'll want to tap on your A key, all right? And that will activate your angle snap toggle, okay? So if it's not already activated, activate your angle snap toggle. And we'll rotate this with the angle snap toggle activated to exactly 90 degrees. And you can look down here in the absolute mode transform panels that we rotated it on the X 90 degrees. Okay, so uh, that's what we need to do now. And then we'll uh, go ahead and control D to deselect everything or just tap a click on an empty space. Okay, and that'll deselect everything. And then we'll go ahead up to our uh, modifier panel again and we'll just tap the V key to go right down to uh, the modifiers that begin with V and we'll get our vertex weld going. All right, and again, the default 0.1 millimeter should be enough to uh, weld that back together again. Okay, so um, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and collapse all again. And we have an editable poly and it should just be all one object and that's verified here. Okay, so everything is welded together. I'm tapping P to go into perspective view and just rotate around a little bit. It looks good. All right, so now I have my hotkeys selected to uh, just tap on a hotkey to go into edge mode. Uh, if you don't have that, you can click on the, uh, the, the buttons in the panel here. Um, I may do another tutorial in the future uh, about how to set hotkeys and what are some of the more important uh, tools to uh, put to hotkeys um, for faster workflow. 
All right, but uh, when you see me jumping around to vertex mode and, and face and edge mode without clicking anything over here, that's because I do have it hot keyed. Okay, but uh, you could just get to the same spot over here in the uh, selection panel. Okay, so what I'm going to do here in edge mode is I'm going to select two of the edges right in the middle of the, uh, the model here. All right, and I'm going to loop that selection. My loop uh, control, uh, my loop command is hotkey to Alt L. I believe that may be the default hotkey. Okay, I don't think I changed that. Um, with these uh, edges, edge loops now selected, what we'll do is just hold down Control and click the polygon face uh, selection over here in the panel, and that will select all of these polygons and they're the ones that we do indeed want selected at this point okay so with all these selected go ahead and add a um, we'll add a relax modifier now I have my panel customized over here as well but you can find the relax modifier in the list and just by opening the list and tapping the R key and uh, there's your relax modifier second down or it could be the first one on there. I have a couple additional add-ons, but we're not going to use those for this tutorial, obviously. All right, so now you have your Relax modifier active. Uh, just go ahead and keep the Boundary Points Fixed button checked, and go ahead and crank up iterations as high as they can go before you don't see any result happening anymore. All right, so then you're left with this object, which is a basic Sphericon. Okay, so this is actually a Sphericon uh, shape. All right, but we're going to play with this a little bit more and get something uh, that we could 3D print and that will look interesting in a 3D print as perhaps a pendant or something of that nature. All right, so here we have a basic Sphericon. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just collapse all at this point again. All right, and... Um, now that we have that, we can go ahead into edge mode one more time. And we'll select one of the edges up here on this top fin. All right, and then one of the edges here on this one. Okay, these blades or fins, however you want to, uh, whatever you want to call them. And then I'm going to loop select that. All right, so I just selected one edge on each uh, fin there, and I just uh, looped them. All right, so I loop selected those, and once you have all these edges selected, um, you can go ahead and uh, hold down Shift while you click Chamfer up here in the uh, Graphite Modeling ribbon or over here on the uh, uh, Editable Poly panel. I like to select a lot of my operations, uh, modeling operations, right here from the ribbon. It's just very convenient. Um, so I held down Shift and ticked on Chamfer, and that brings up the caddy. And we're going to Chamfer uh, to about 5 millimeters. All right, and we don't want any internal segments, so just leave it at the 1 default and click OK. All right, so now that we have this, we're left with some ingons here on each uh, each section, and we're going to quad those up right now. All right, so to do that, we're going uh, we're in edge mode, so we can select an edge here, and then select an edge here, okay, and then we'll ring that selection, okay. And I just used my uh, hotkeys on the keyboard for ringing, um, but you can select it up here in the uh, graphite ribbon or uh, over here in the uh, editable poly tool panel okay so now I have those uh, edge rings selected I'm going to go up here to my connect tool hold down shift click connect to bring up the caddy and we're going to initiate three segments okay so three segments into the uh, connect and then click OK to accept that or the check mark I should say all right, so now we have three additional segments cut into there. And we're going to go down to our vertex level. And I'll zoom in here so you can see what's going on. And we'll go up to the top end gone that we have here. And we'll just 
select these two vertices and we'll just go ahead and connect it and um, just click on connect and uh, that should connect those two up and then go ahead and select the second set of vertices and connect those I'm just using my hotkey for that here alright so I connected up these three and we have all quads here now alright so now we'll just roll over to the other side or to the side panel I should say and we'll do the same here alright now I'll just go through this real fast you can see what I'm doing I'm just uh, using connect to initiate a segment between those two uh, selected vertices alright and that quads that up and then we'll go down here and do the same to this one okay and this is where it's beneficial to uh, actually have a hotkey for the connect tool because you can get through this very very quickly uh, when you have that hotkeyed okay so we're on the last uh, the last one here all right so that uh, connects all that up and we're all quadded up now everything on here is uh, quadrilangular uh, polygons four-sided polygons okay so now that we have that um, we're going to uh, select this inner web portion again and uh, if you haven't done it any uh, face selecting you should just be able to go to the face level and it will still be selected okay just like this and we're going to detach this from the rest of the object um, I'm going to hold down shift and click detach and I do not want to detach it this time as an element so I'm going to deselect that I want to detach it as a completely separate object okay so now it is a separate object from these two curved uh, parts all right so then we could right click to bring up our uh, our quad menus and we could just um, hide unselected and it will hide that uh, middle part okay while we work on these two parts separately okay so now we're going to work on these to close them up and make them manifold objects because right now they're just single-sided uh, uh, polygons so all right the the first thing we're going to do here is um, we're going to we're going to switch to our uh, scale uh, gizmo alright so we we'll just switch to our scale gizmo and we're going to change our pivot placement to the use select selection centers which is the second one down in this rollout up at the top here okay so we're going to use selection centers and then we're going to go to our border selection and select the borders on both objects and using our uh, scale gizmo here um, we're just going to hold down shift and uniformly scale out some faces okay and you can scale them out I'd say about 10% which will be if you look down here on your absolute transform panel I'll do this again I'll undo that so you can see down here in these boxes when you hold down shift and you pull out new faces you'll see a number changing down there in the X coordinate when you have it at about 90 that's where you want it okay so we scaled these out to about 10 millimeter uh, 10 percent and uh, that turned out to be 90 down here okay and then once we have this now we're going to quad this up we're going to uh, uh, make it manifold all right so what we're going to do though before we do that is apply a shell modifier and uh, we're going to shell it with an inner amount the outer amount will be zero so change it to zero and then the uh, the inner amount will be 2.0 millimeters okay so notice we're keeping within about one millimeter thickness for our 3d printing purposes okay 
so two millimeters thickness on the inner amount and then uh, just one segment is fine and uh, we're going to scroll down here until we see uh, select interfaces we're going to select that and then we're going to add an edit poly modifier on top of this and we're going to go immediately to the face level and we're going to delete and you'll see those are still selected from the shell modifier so we'll go ahead and delete those all right because we're going to uh, bridge these all together ourselves to make it uh, the way we want it all right so now we're going to bridge these all together and in order to do that we'll select the entire edge loop around the uh, the border okay and um, we'll just go ahead and rotate this a little bit so we can see the two top edges and we'll go ahead and remove those from our selection oops I got one extra edge there so these two edges at the top we want removed and then the two edges uh, at the bottom we want removed okay so you don't want the entire edge loop all around you just want to uh, have it uh, so that these up here I think you can see what I'm talking about the top two edges and the bottom two are deselected all right now once you have that go ahead and hold down shift and bring up your bridge caddy and um, that bridges everything together but you want to create an extra segment here so go to two and then click the check mark all right and then once that's done go ahead to edge mode I mean not edge mode um, vertex mode and uh, go ahead to target weld and just target weld those holes closed all right on both ends and uh, that's rotate down to the one down here and target weld that now what we've done is we've closed that up with quads okay it's all quad faces there all right so now that is a manifold object well it's a closed object all right and um, we're going to do the same to this to this one as well all right so very simply we're just going to loop select the whole thing and then we'll just go in here and remove the top two edges on either side and then bridge and it should retain the last uh, setting so you don't have to bring the caddy up this time all right and then switch over to vertex mode and employ the uh, target weld tool and just target weld that vertex to that one okay we'll rotate and you can see it a little better here so this one to this one and that quads everything up all right so now both of these are closed objects which is what we want um, especially for 3d print you don't want to have any holes in your objects okay so now that we have that um, we're going to go ahead and select the uh, we're going to select these faces right along the uh, the bridges that we just made okay and select it here now make sure you're still in uh, use uh, selection center as your pivot placement okay and then go ahead and shift click extrude to bring up the caddy and we're going to change the extrude type to local normals and we're going to extrude it to about one millimeter so 1.0 millimeter all right and then accept okay so at this point you should have something that looks like this okay so now we can bring back our hidden object all I'm doing is right clicking on an empty space to bring up the quad menu and I'm going to unhide all and that brings back the uh, hidden object that we had there okay so now I'll select on my uh, I'll select the other object here this web object I'll call it a web object I guess uh, just for reference and um, we'll go down to the um, 
element level. Select everything and uh, use the scale gizmo to scale the object down about 20%. So down to about until you see 80 down here on your uh, transform, uh, type in transform. Okay, and you'll see 80 down there. So you want to scale it down 20% until you see 80. And that's, uh, that's going to look like this. Okay. So once you've done that, go ahead to edge mode. Select one edge along the ring here. Okay, on this uh, outside ring, select one edge. And then go to and find your uh, generate topology panel. Now, in I'm using uh, 3ds Max 2012, obviously, but in newer versions, I know they still have this feature. I'm not sure if it's in the same location. Uh, I believe it must be in the same location here, right under the uh, editable poly tools on the left-hand side, uh, the generate topology panel. Okay, so bring that up. And what we're going to do now that we have one edge selected here, and make sure that it's along this uh, along this ring of edges, because if you select uh, one of these edges on an edge loop, you're going to get a different result. So make sure it's one of these, and then go to the hive, and you'll see that it requires one edge to be selected. So that's why we did that. So select hive and you'll see that it procedurally changes the topology of the uh, of the mesh to a hexagonal like pattern okay and that's all we need the panel for so we can close that out now go ahead to face level and select all if they're not already and holding down shift click on inset and we're going to change the uh, inset type to by polygon and the default of one millimeter is perfect. So um, if yours isn't at one millimeter, go ahead and type that in and then accept. And then now that you have these uh, interfaces, uh, inset faces, uh, go ahead and delete them. All right, just leaving you with this uh, hexagonal cage here. Okay. All right, so now, um, once you have the uh, once you have the cage done, uh, the rest of it is pretty much repeating procedure. Um, we're going to uh, at this point switch our pivot point uh, type back to the uh, use pivot point center, okay? And we're going to go ahead and select. Uh, let's say we're going to select one of the border edges along here, okay? And with our scale gizmo, we're going to hold down shift and uniformly scale out a new set of faces just like this, okay? And you want to scale them out to probably 5%, okay? Now I went a little bit more than 5. Down here it said 107. Um, you go probably want to go about 105 on that, okay? But uh, since my first one was 107, I'll make the second one 107 as well. All right, so there it is. Whoop. And try that again, holding down Shift on the keyboard. And 107, okay. So we've scaled out these new faces to exactly 7%. And then we will uh, go ahead and apply a shell modifier to this. Now, we're going to it remembered the inner amount from our last shell as two millimeters, and we're going to keep it two millimeters, and that gives a nice thickness in here. However, later on we're going to subdivide this, and that could thin this all out. So, in order to prevent that, we're going to add some segments to it. Okay. Now, if you look in closely, you'll see where it's adding the segments, the, 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 the row of faces where these segments will be added, because um, we don't want the segments out here. We only want them internally around these uh, hexagonal shapes, 
uh, so that it holds the shape a little bit better and we don't have to go in and select everything and do an inset. Um, in newer versions of 3ds Max, like in 2015 and 16, you will have a very, very good uh, subdivision algorithm where you could crease edges with the uh, with the new uh, algorithm that they have, the Pixar, uh, you know, the subdivision that they use there. Um, I forget offhand what it's called, the Catmull Clark uh, subdivision or whatever. Um, however, I, I'm use I'm going to use Turbo Smooth here, so I want to um, create some support edges. Okay. Again, if you're going to use crease edges in newer versions of Max, you can skip doing this uh, segments entirely and just go ahead and select the edges that you want to crease. But um, I, I find this is even just as quick. So I'm going to just go ahead and add th uh, three segments here. And um, then I will go ahead and add an edit poly. Now I want the segments, uh, as I said, in, in between each one of these uh, areas. However, I do not want them up here on these edges, on these outer borders. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit, and I'm going to make sure I got the right edges. First of all, let me just remove those. Okay. One, two. So what I might do here is hide unselected. Okay. And I'm just going to look. Okay, yes. Here's the edges right here that I want to remove. So I'm going to go to edge level. I'm going to select this one and this one in the on these faces. I'm going to loop them. I'm going to hold down control and backspace to remove those edge loops along with the vertices. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. All right. So I'm going to select this and this, loop them, and just remove along with the vertices. Okay. So now they're gone. And I'm going to bring back the object. So unhide all. There's the other part of the object. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach these two pieces back together again. All right, so I will click on the attach button. And it doesn't matter if I have this web selected or if I have the outer uh, uh, curve selected. Um, it doesn't matter which one we're going to attach them. So go ahead and click attach and just click on the, uh, the other object. Now they are all one object. Okay, so with that done, I can go to face mode and uh, deselect everything. Go over and select these faces inside here on this part of the object. And select the inner faces there on that part of the object. Okay, that's why you, now you can see why I didn't want those interior edge loops here. Uh, running through these faces because I'm going to bridge this together and uh, it wouldn't have bridged properly because this one doesn't have those uh, edges and you need the same amount of uh, edges in order to perform a proper bridge. Alright, so I'm going to bridge together these selected faces on the interior here and I'm just going to tap bridge and that did the trick there and I'll go down to now to this, uh, this section and I'll select all those and you can barely see it in there but they're in there and I'm just going to select all of those and bridge them okay so now that those are all bridged um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten up some of these edge loops here for the next step which will be the subdivision okay so I'm going to go in here and the first edge loop that you see after this first edge the next edge loop I'm going to select that okay and uh, I'm going to go over here into the uh, edit poly panel under edit geometry and I'm going to tick my edge constraints on all right and I'm going to switch to my scale gizmo and I'm going to scale those down all the way, okay, all the way so that they're overlapping. But we don't want to keep them overlapping. We're going to just scale them up a little bit now with the edge constraints on. And what that does is it ensures 
that this edge is equal to equidistant all the way around the other edge below it okay and we just wanted to maintain a little bit of separation here okay but we want it equidistant all the way around for a nice neat result all right now these other two edges above that one I'll select loop and holding down control I'll just backspace to remove them along with the uh, vertices okay we don't need them anymore now over here I'm gonna find my first edge group my first edge loop all around here and I'm gonna actually go to the second one and do the same thing alright I still have my edge constraints on so I'm gonna pull it I'm gonna scale it down all the way release and then while it, with it still selected I'm just going to scale it up a little bit just slightly here if I can get it the right way that looks good enough alright so what I did was I scaled it all the way down tight till it was overlapping this edge here then I released the mouse button then I went back without deselecting anything and scaled it back up just slightly and that gave me uh, uh, a perfect equidistant uh, edge loop all around okay so now that that's done I'm going to turn off my edge constraints don't forget to turn them off because that could screw up everything you do afterwards alright so I'm gonna select that edge loop and I'm just going to remove it along with the verts I'm holding down control and backspacing okay so now we have this object and um, at this point this is an object that's ready for subdivision okay and um, I just apply in my case here I'm going to apply turbo smooth and I'll give it a couple iterations and you can see what's what's happened here so here's our object and uh, we could export this as an STL for 3d printing now in the uh, in the render I did you could see there's a hole here um, which we could create to put to slip a, a you know some kind of string through there if you wanted to use this as a pendant uh, or whatever so I'll show you how to create that hole all right um, by the way, if we remove edge faces here, you can see that uh, I wouldn't. I would export this with three iterations of Turbo Smooth, nice and smooth result, and um, perfect for 3D printing, right there. Okay, so um, if you're going to use it just as a digital asset, two iterations is probably good enough. Unless you're getting an extremely close view, but even in this render here, I, I believe I only used two iterations. All right, so, all right, okay. So I'll show you how to build this hole. We can remove this uh, Turbo Smooth for now. Bring our edge faces back up. All right, and we're going to go into our front view, orthographic, and we'll zoom in a little bit, and uh, we'll go to. Uh, our vertex mode and select all these vertices here okay and um, we'll just move them over all right to straighten that line out a little bit now we'll switch to edges we will grab an edge here and ring it and then uh, I'll create a connection through there okay and then I'll turn on my edge constraints and just move it over a little bit until I have almost the same size polygons at the top there okay so right about there and then I'll turn off the constraints okay so if we tap F3 we can see our wireframe view that we have an interior portion right here however we have a guide here that was that uh, we can't go below this this line this edge right here or we'll be intersecting the interior portion of the model which would not be good for 3d printing so um, we want to use this edge right here as a guide we can't go below that line when we're building our hole okay so I'll go ahead and select these two vertices or these two faces I'm sorry and then the two faces opposite that okay on the other side directly now you could use symmetry here if you wanted to and just do this on the one side but uh, 
I'll show you how to do it without symmetry, if not, if you ever wanted to learn how to do that. Alright, so just select these two, and then go ahead and hold down shift while you click inset. And um, I'll inset this probably right to about 1.5 millimeters. Click OK. Go ahead and delete. Now select the uh, border edges on each one using the border selection tool and then cap. All right, so now we've capped that with an end gone. Now if you're still in border mode, you could hold down shift on the keyboard and switch to polygon. Oh, wait a minute now, that wasn't correct. Hold down shift and control while you switch over to polygon and it will select that interior polygon. Okay, so shift and control from border mode over to here. We'll select that interior face. All right, so now with that selected, we'll hit our geo poly up here in the uh, polygons uh, panel of the graphite modeling ribbon, geo poly, and that'll turn it to a circle or a circular shape anyway. And then I'll switch to my scale tool and just scale it down slightly. All right. And now I'll go and shift click inset and I'll only inset it about maybe half a millimeter you know maybe not even half a millimeter and um, from there I will just bridge and then with those interior faces selected I will inset again using this previous settings and this is what I'm left with and now, if we go ahead and uh, add a subdivision uh, smoothing modifier here, in this case it's Turbo Smooth, and go about three iterations, you could see that we have a nice hole there in our object. Okay. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will be bringing you more tutorials like this in the future, so please subscribe to my channel. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. I know it went a little long, but I wanted to show you uh, everything in great detail here. So, Alright, I really hope you like this, and I will see you again soon. Thank you very much.